Hey guys, welcome to Chapel at Home with your boy, Pastor Link. <laughs> How are you all doing? I hope you've all had a great week. Guess what? We only have three more weeks of school left. We are so close to school ending and summer break to begin. Just three more weeks, we're almost there. Keep on pushing. Do your best in school so you can finish the school year strong. I have a question for you guys. How many of you like or love your teachers? Raise your hand. Oh, it seems like many of you raised your hands. Did you know that some of your teachers were my teachers? Hmm. When I was in kindergarten, I had Ms. Lopez as my teacher and Ms. Maceda. Then I moved on to first grade where I had Ms. Lorna as my teacher. Then in second grade, I had Ms. Russell as my teacher. And then again in third grade, I had Ms. Lopez as my teacher. And then guess what? In fifth grade, I also had Ms. Lopez as my teacher. I think she really liked my class because she kept on following us. And you want to know something else? I went to school with Miss Amich and Miss Veronica. I didn't graduate with them because, you know, they're way, way older than me, but I went to school together with them. I'm not trying to say that they're way, way old, we just, you know, they're older than me. So they're not super old, they're young, but you know, not that old. They're just older than me by a little bit. Did you know that when Jesus was alive, people would call him teacher? Jesus was known as a teacher because he would always be teaching about God and how much God loves us. In fact, Jesus is known as the ultimate teacher, the best teacher ever in the whole universe. Do you know what makes Miss Taylor, Miss Lopez, Miss Heidi, Miss Russell, Miss Hernandez, Miss Amich, Miss Veronica, Mr. T, Miss Lorna? You want to know what makes them all great teachers? What makes them great teachers is that they try to teach like Jesus and they try to love you like Jesus. For today's story, we will be looking at Matthew chapter five. One of Jesus' most famous teaching moments is when he's walking up a mountain and the crowd starts to follow him and then he starts to teach them. This moment is called the Sermon on the Mount and it's probably the most famous sermon, the most famous message in the whole Bible. What makes this sermon or this message so special is that Jesus is teaching the audience, the crowd, how God really is, how God loves us, and how we should treat people the way God loves them. One of the lessons that Jesus teaches on the Sermon on the Mount is on anger. Jesus says you must not commit murder. This is one of the commands in God's law. The sixth commandment says that you must not commit murder or hurt anyone. So we know we should not do that. We shouldn't murder or hurt anyone. But Jesus goes even further and he says, you cannot be angry at anyone. No way, not getting angry at someone, that's really hard. Have you ever gotten angry at someone? I know that I have gotten angry at my brother, Mr. T. Maybe you're like me who also has gotten angry at his brother, sister, or maybe you have gotten angry at your friends or cousins, classmates, or maybe even your parents. In Matthew chapter five, Jesus says that we should not get angry at these people. Do you know why Jesus says not to get angry at people? Because when you get angry at people, you say things you shouldn't say. When you get angry at your brother or sister, you might end up calling them stupid. Jesus says that calling your brother or sister stupid when you're angry is as bad as committing murder or hurting someone. So if you call one of your friends, your family members stupid, you're breaking God's law. You are hurting that person. In God's eyes, when you call your brother, sister, or friend stupid, this is the same as murdering or hurting someone. When you call someone stupid, you deserve the same punishment as someone who murdered or hurt you. How crazy is that? You might be thinking, but it's not that serious. It's just the word. But guess what? When you say these things, you really mean it. When you say things out of anger, when you're angry, it, it comes out of your heart. This is what's inside your heart and this is what you, you say. So saying, calling someone stupid out of anger or murdering or hurting someone is what's coming out of your heart. And Jesus knows this. Anger and hate can lead you to hurting someone. And that's why it's not good to be angry at people. 
If you have ever been angry at someone and now you feel bad about it, don't worry about it. I have great news for you. Guess what? Jesus wants to change. He wants to transform your heart. He doesn't want you to have that same angry, hateful heart. Instead, he wants you to have a heart that has love. He wants you to love people. Jesus is the ultimate teacher and he wants to teach you how to love people. Jesus is the ultimate teacher. He wants to teach you how to transform your heart so that you can love everyone the way he loves you. I have one tip for you to help you out when you get angry at someone. Whenever you have anger towards someone, the best thing to do for them is to pray for them. That's right, I said it. The best thing to do for someone that you are angry at is to pray for them. When you pray for someone, you're asking Jesus to bless that person. When you pray for someone, you only want what's best for them. And this is why when you're angry at someone and you pray for them, it's, it's, it changes everything. You can't be angry at someone you're praying for because when you're angry, you just want the worst for that person. But when you pray for them, you want what's best for them. You want Jesus to bless them. So next time you feel anger towards someone, pray for them. And by doing this, you start to not be so angry at them, not hate them, and instead you start to love them. You love them the way Jesus loves them. I know that it is hard to control your anger, especially when someone has been mean to you. But Jesus is asking you to love them the way he loves you. Jesus is asking you, he wants to teach you how to love them the way your heavenly father, the way he loves you. Today, if there is someone who you have gotten angry at, I want you to pause this video right now and pray for that person. And then unpause it so we can have one final prayer. Remember, you can't be angry at someone you're praying for. You can't be angry at someone who you want God to bless. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for teaching me how to control my anger. Please remind me to pray for people next time that I am angry at them. Please teach me to love people the way you love them, to treat them the way you treat them. Please teach me to take away my anger and show love. And most importantly, teach me how to change my heart. Give me a heart that loves people and doesn't hate or is angry at people. Thank you for everything. Thank you for loving me and thank you for being awesome. In your name I pray, amen. All right, guys, have a happy weekend. Happy Sabbath. Take care. Spike your hair. Thank you for coming to Chapel at Home with your boy, Pastor Link, a.k.a. me? Yeah. Anyways, have a great day and God bless. High fives.